Welcome to Garden of Lights. I'm Susan Howington, Family Consumer Science Agent with the Henry County Cooperative Extension, partnership with UGA Extension Service. Today we're going to be talking about lettuce, and we're also here from Frank Hancock, our Agriculture and Natural Resource Agent, and he's going to talk more about selecting plants. We'll see you back in just a little bit on Garden of Lights. Welcome back to Garden Delights. Today we're going to be talking about lettuce and I'm going to especially hone in on romaine lettuce because that's what's going to be in our recipe for today. And I love lettuce. I'm always looking for at least one week out of the week that we're going to eat lettuce, some type of salad. So I want to talk a little bit more about romaine lettuce. Lettuce is one of the best low calories vegetable that you could probably eat. To eat about 10 calories you only need a chopped up, about shredded up, one cup of lettuce. It's what we add to it that comes into the calories. But let's talk about the lettuce. It is extremely high in folate, and that's, that's really good for us. It's also very high in vitamin A. It has some C, and it has some K. It's also very good for us because it has a little bit of fiber to it, too. But as far as looking for something that is saturated fat-free, cholesterol free, low sodium, all those are what you're going to find in this lettuce. And so I'm using romaine, but let's talk about the other lettuces. They're going to be about the same too when it comes to the calories, um, the, in, the vitamins and nutrients you're going to get from it. You're going to be looking for the same thing in all this lettuce. Remember what I said, it's what you add to it is what the problem is. But let's talk about selection. When you're looking at your lettuce at the grocery store, I usually look at the whole big picture of that lettuce. Like usually lettuce is in a plastic container and so we're looking all around at the bottom. I'm looking for lettuce that has wonderful green leafy leaves to it. I'm looking for lettuce that has no wilt, no brown spots on it because that tells me if it's wilty or if it's brown spots, it's more probably going to a decay. And when you're looking at lettuce, that's the things you should be looking for because you're buying it, you want the best quality for your money. And when you're buying that lettuce, you want to make sure that you also put it in good use as far as our storage goes. Now storage, lettuce stays about a week in your refrigerator. Different lettuce types are going to stay longer and I'm going to talk just a little bit about those too. But lettuce in general is going to stay about a week in your refrigerator. So that means in that week time, come up with something you're going to use that lettuce for. That's important. But the romaine lettuce is such a good thing and it lasts about a week. Um, they do like you, if you can, to wash it up because every piece of lettuce grows in the ground. So we do know it's going to have soil on it. It could have some pests on it. So you want to make sure you wash your lettuce. That's so, so important. So when you're storing that lettuce, make sure, depending on the lettuce, romaine, they would like for you, if you can, to go ahead and wash it up. Um, and it's going to put in a plastic bag and you're going to store it in that plastic bag for about a week. Now, some lettuce, like romaine may come in pack without a package, but if it comes in a package, you're okay about leaving that package because it's in a Ziploc container. Um, but make sure you kind of wash it up too before you store it because that's going to keep it fresh and ready to use when you use it. Now there's other types of lettuce out there. There's the iceberg lettuce and that's the one most common. That's the one we all like to use. It's, it's, it's a lot of times cheaper um, and we may want to use that. But the romaine is not that expensive. A lot of times when we buy the romaine, you're going to get three Piece, three little uh, bunches of romaine. Now, iceberg is like a firm head, and so it still want to look for the bright green, no brown spots, and no wilt on the leaves. And then you have the leafy uh, uh, lettuce, and that's the kind that I remember when I was growing up as a child, going to the garden and picking that leafy uh, lettuce. Now, it has like a core, and so when I say a core, it's similar to this. It has like a core, and then it has all the leafy leaves, and you can just pick the leaves off and make your salad or whatever you want to make to it. Um, you know, like the 
the uh, iceberg is going to have the head. And this is very similar to the leafy because it has a core to it and then you have all your leaves. And that's the reason why I say it's very important that you wash it because these leaves can have soil in them and they also can have insects into them. So you want to make sure. And then there are other types like butterhead and it's a very delicate lettuce and it has a little bit of sweet taste to it. Um, it's very um, soft, the lettuce and um, chopping it up. It's a really good lettuce also to choose from. So those are general the top three that I think about when I think of lettuce as far as when people are buying them at the grocery store. And like I say, these are very low calorie lettuces. So think about how you can put a lettuce salad into your diet during the week, especially if you're trying to lose weight. And that's what a lot of people are trying to do is lose weight. They always think about salad. So think about that if you're trying to keep your, sal your weight down. A salad is a perfect thing to think about as far as making up a salad during the week. When we come back, we're going to be making a taco salad, but first we want to hear from Frank Hancock and he's going to tell us a little bit more on selecting that plant and what to look for when you're purchasing. So we'll see you back in just a little bit on Garden Delights. Okay, today we are out here with uh, Kathy Henderson. Uh, Kathy is, has been a radio personality. She writes articles for the local Times newspaper, so you probably see her name if you read the local papers. Uh, she runs Kathy's plants out here, so she's got a greenhouse and, and a nursery. What we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about selecting plants from the nursery, not necessarily what variety to select, but how to look at the plants before you take them home. I spend a lot of time going around looking at people's sick and dying plants, and uh, a lot of it took place way back at the nursery. When they brought it home, it was doomed. Here's a plant right here I pulled up a couple of weeks ago that uh, you can see all these roots that are wrapped around here. Uh, just choking the plant off. This plant's been in the ground for about 10 years. It was slowly fading away. It was slowly killing itself because these roots all wrapped into themselves, circling roots. So it, it, had this plant been looked at when it was pulled out of the pot, it might have been rejected in something with a, a better root system, something we can fluff up and make the roots go where they're supposed to do. So I'm going to turn it over to Kathy here and let her talk to you about some of the things that you can look for when you're out purchasing a plant. Well, one of the things, Frank, is to look at plants and just see how they look, you know, whether they look healthy. And a plant that is healthy usually has a glossy leaf. It has a, it's upright, it's turgid. So just looking at the plant in the nursery will give you an idea. But now the most important part of any plant is right there under the ground. And that is really important. You were talking about planting it too deep. Everything about this plant and how it's gonna grow in the future is in that root system. So I'm just gonna pull this perennial out. This is Rhodia. It's a really nice plant, good substitute for hostas in your garden because the deer don't eat it. And it has nice evergreen foliage. Look at that root system. It's all tangled up, but it's not irreparable. You can just go in there and repair that by cutting. Now you see, I'm not slicing it. You know, I'm not getting mean with this plant. I don't hate this plant, so. But right there is a curling root, one just like you mentioned there. Yep. And I'm gonna cut it so that it doesn't. Then I'm gonna start pulling these out. And this, this is relatively easy to do because it's damp. And it's real important for it to be wet when you do this. Don't do this to a dry plant, you'll break its roots. Another clue that this plant may have been, and you don't wanna do this at the nursery. This is when you take it home. Um, another clue that might have told you that this plant was root bound is the fact that it has moss on the top. That moss can indicate that that plant's been in that pot a long time. Now, this is getting ready to grow. So we have got it ready to put into the ground and put it a little bit high because you can always add soil. You can't take it away. If you take it away, you make a hole. 
the plant will get too much water. Here's an annual. Look at that. Now this one I do a little different. I cut off the bottom, a good serrated knife. It can be a kitchen knife that's just kind of lost its good cutting ability that you keep in your uh, garden tools. That'll work good for you. And I just take my fingers. Now this is ready to go into the ground. This caladium will at least last until fall. Give you some color, put it in a pot. If you can get it this time of year, you may be able to find it on sale. But it's important to get those roots spread out. And they so get that, them spread out so, so they'll they keep going. This right. way. And that way they can get larger, take in more water, keep the plant healthy. Now here's a plant that has a good root system. You can barely see the roots coming out, so to get it ready, and you can depot these at the nursery or have someone on the nursery staff, if it's a big plant, just say, I want to look at the roots of that plant and they will depot the plant. That's how you say it, depot. And so... But don't take your knife with you to the nursery. <laughs> no, don't do that. I don't think the nurseryman's going to appreciate it when you do this. This is what you do if you get, when you get home and get it ready to plant. And that, just a light fluffing will do it. And this little forsythia is ready to go in the ground. This is one that I dug up under my forsythia. Oh. Put it in a pot, it's ready to go to another place in the garden. I usually do that when I'm transplanting, it makes it easier. Now, here's a real problem. This is a blueberry. Blueberries, by the time they're a three-year-old plant like this one is, look at that root system. Now this one's dry. And I left this one dry just to show that once the roots matted like this, these are tiny little fibrous roots, they can't get wet. You can also, stand and water this till the cows come home and you're still going to have a dry root ball. And you're also looking at darker color on yes. the roots than, than some of these. Now there's nothing plants. wrong with this and planting it. I will plant this in my garden. I have no problem with it, but first I'll put it in a bucket of water, soak this root system until it's very, very damp, and then come back with my knife and make cuts and pull out just some of those roots, not cutting deep, but just pulling them out. When I plant it, here's what you need to do. Plant it up to like this deep, okay. no deeper. Don't even dig your hole deeper because it'll sink down. Dig your hole that deep and this wide. And then as you get this planted, you can add soil up to, but not above this line that was formed in the pot. This is where its roots are. If you bury it up to here, you're gonna have a problem. This, this blueberry will never produce berries if you do that. So if you find a blueberry, you're gonna find one like this. It, it just does it and you need to treat it, but you do need to soak that root ball before you go ripping into it. And this is a wonderful plant. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful plant just to have in your garden. Uh, it feeds the birds mostly. I think people make the, the mistake of making their hole deep and not wide. Right. Actually, you don't need to make your hole any deeper than this right. because your roots aren't going to go down. They're going to go out. So make a big, wide, shallow hole. Give them a place to go out that's right. rather than being in that, Get a good root system. in that red clay. And that's the secret of choosing your plant. You can take a plant like this. It doesn't have to be beautiful from the top. You have a good root system. Plant it well, and the top will take care of itself. You don't have to worry about that. The main thing is that root system. It's you got to so have important. a good root system, and or, you, or it's hole. not going to live. And the problem is, you can plant it, and it may live two or three years before it dies. But it, but it's doomed from the time you put it in the ground. It doesn't necessarily just die because I planted it too deep or because I didn't spread the roots out. It it just over time, and so now. You got three years invested in it and it's a goner. So. And if you sink it down in that hole, it may sink itself, then you put all this mulch on top of it, which turns into soil eventually. I spend a lot of time pulling what we call mulch volcanoes out from around trees. When you pile that, that mulch up around the tree and get it up higher than, than ground level, 
that starts the decaying process that decays that cambium layer on the tree and eventually you start losing, uh, losing some of the top because the root system can't send anything to it. And then lawnmowers, if the tree's roots are running out on top of the ground, and a lot of times they do because this red clay doesn't have any oxygen in it and the tree needs oxygen to, to, to function, so the roots get up close to the top of the ground and then instead of making a nice mulch bed around the tree, we just cut them off with a lawnmower. And then this side of the tree is dead and you look and the roots have been cut off. So here and all of those things that, that you can do to keep from, most of the trees and, and shrubs that I look at are not diseased. They, they've been destroyed because they, they were wrong to start with or they got planted wrong. And that's that's the story of what I do. Go around and find and find dead trees. And of course, once it's dead, I can't do a whole lot about it. You don't think this one's going to come back? I don't think this is going to come back. And uh, we'll just we'll let that one just go. It'll turn to compost one day. It'll turn to compost one day. But it is an example of what not to do. That's right. All right. Well. We've been out here with the chickens and the, and the peacocks, and uh, you've probably heard some of them in the background. They're really pretty. Kathy's got a lot of peacocks out here. Anybody that's interested in having a peacock, just get in touch with Kathy, <laughs> and she can fix you up with a peacock. Your neighbors won't appreciate and, uh, it, but they're wonderful animals. But you need room for the noise, but, uh, <laughs> but if you need a peacock, just come see Kathy. And right now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back in and see what Susan is fixing in the kitchen. Welcome back to Garden Delights. We're going to be talking about lettuce and we're going to be making a taco salad. It is very easy, very tasty, and um, I'm going to start off telling you a little bit how, what I've already started ahead of time for the recipe for the taco salad. You need about a pound of ground turkey and also you're going to need a package of taco season and follow the directions on that taco season. So I already have the meat gra uh, browned up and ready to go. And I am going to start off in a, a salad bowl. I mean, you could put it in any container, but I'm going to layer this salad a little bit and you'll see how pretty it is before you end up serving it um, to your family. So the first thing we do is we do the ground uh, turkey. We already have that ready. And the next ingredients that we're going to add to the ground turkey is a cup and a half of Tostitos chips and um, it can be any uh, brand that you like out there but what you want to make sure you do you want to make sure that you've chopped up or broke up the Tostitos and you're going to just lay them on top so you're going to lay your chips on top and notice they're kind of on the big side so you don't want them too small but just you know break them up to where they're a nice size and this is going to be about a cup and a half and that's not going to be a lot of chips because once you start crunching your chips up it it goes a long way so you're going to just add this to your meat part of it so i'm just going to finish this out layer this up and the meat already it smells really really good so that's our first ingredients and the second thing you're going to do is you're going to um, add some black beans this is one can of black beans and they need, need to be dry, drained a little bit so make sure you drain them so i'm just going to add these i'll try not to touch it too much and just see if i can shake it around um I have a little spoon i'm going to use it and we're just going to put that next kind of spread it around your chips and like I said, I'm using romaine lettuce, but you could use other types of lettuce too to make this recipe. So don't just think you've got to use the romaine. You may have a favorite lettuce out there that you might want to use. The second thing we're going to use um, for our layer is this is corn. And these are two ears of corn, been cut off of the ears. So I'm going to add the corn. And this is white corn. And um, you could have yellow corn if you don't like white corn, but I just think it looks really good with the black beans. So I'm gonna add that. And the next ingredients we're going to do is our lettuce. And I love romaine lettuce. I love the texture of it. I love the taste of it. It chops up really good and it has a great crunch in your salads. So we're gonna take this up and this is one head of romaine lettuce. And what I did is I chopped it in half and you can see 
when you chop it in half, you have like smaller leaves in the center part of it. And uh, you wanna make sure that you wash all these leaves up because like I said, the soil and the insects that could get on your lettuce could be something you do not want to eat later while you're chopping up that lettuce and eating it when you're eating your lettuce. So what we're going to do is I like to, because if I cut it like I want to the first, what I like to do is kind of come down the center of the lettuce and I'm going to get some of the crunchy part toward the core and I'm going to do the same thing with this one. I'm going to kind of go down the center. I'll tell you why I'm going to do this in just a second and show you a little bit of why. When you're chopping your lettuce, um, if, you, if you don't kind of go down, it's going to have long strings of lettuce. And so I want to make sure that my strings are not going to be too, too uh, wide when I'm cutting it because I'll show you what I'm talking about. So when you cut it, if you don't cut it down the center, you're going to have it even longer than this, which is fine because people can use a knife to cut it up. But I like my lettuce a little bit finer, so I'm going to do that um, just to make sure it's that way. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to move this out of the way, and I'm going to start from the bottom because I just want to show you the leaf part. I'm not going to get the bun end of that core. I'm going to get a little bit of it because I like the crunch of the, of the romaine lettuce. So what I'm going to do is just kind of chop it down the center and keep moving all the way down. And this is washed lettuce, so make sure you wash it. It's very, very important you wash your lettuce. So I'm just going to keep chopping this part of it. And I'm going to go ahead and pick this part up and work it into my salad. So this is the next layer. So we're just going to kind of move this around. And if you see some that are kind of long, um, just tear them up a little bit. Um, if you don't want to cut it, you can tear it. And I'm going to do the same thing with this one. I'm going to kind of get toward the this part of it. I'm going to get just a little bit more of that, that core part because I do like this part of it. It's very crunchy. So, um, and if you have little ones, you know, that are eating, you, you might want to chop this up even finer, but just make sure you chop it up to where it goes really well in the salad. And romaine, I just like it. I like the texture. I like the color. It just does so well in the salad. And it's just different from the same uh, iceberg lettuce that we tend to go back all the time and eat. So just try to remember that part of it too. So I'm just going to kind of put the rest of this in. I see some string parts. So I just want to make sure that we have it all mixed up really nice. Add some more. Get some of that crunch to it. And I like it because it has good color too. It just, you get in the base part of it, then you get the green leafy part of it, and you just have a great looking salad. So this is already looking pretty good right here. I'm just gonna kind of move this to the side. I'm gonna add my bows over here. And um, as you can see, this is already looking really nice. This is something that you could also do for any, you know, family events you're going to, you need something quick to make. Um, and everybody will be really impressed that you've made this salad. Now this is onions, this is green onions, and this is about six of them. If you don't like green onions, you can go with another type of onion, but we're going to layer that on top. And it's going to blend in, so you're not going to be able to see the onions, but they're going to be very, very tasty when you taste your taco salad. So we're just going to add that. And next, we have a little twist on it. We're going to be adding Catalina dressing, and this is a light dressing. This is about a cup. And what we're going to do is just add it to the, to the lettuce part, and I'm just going to try to drizzle it until I get as much as I can around the, the lettuce because this is going to work in when you start eating the lettuce and the salad. You'll, you'll dig in, you'll get a little bit of this, and you'll get a little bit of the taco meat. So I want to make sure I get it all on top. And this is just a little different now. If you don't like Catalina dressing, you know, you could always go with um, a ranch. Um, you could even, if you don't like this, you could go with a um, low fat sour cream. Uh, so you could change this up, but we're going to do a little twist. So this right here is our shredded cheese and you need about a cup of your shredded cheese. So we're just going to kind of add that to the top of it. And you can add different types of cheese if you want to. This cheese smells so good. I love cheese. It smells so, so good. And then this is a large tomato. And if you've noticed, everything that we're putting in a salad, if you're growing this in your garden, you're going to have a very fresh tom uh, tomatoes are fresh, your corn is fresh, um, your lettuce, if you're growing lettuce in your garden. All this, you can think about how fresh this taco salad could be if it was coming straight out of your garden. So we're going to put 
the large chopped up tomato on top. I just want to make sure I get it all around and on the outer parts. And I love tomatoes and I'm always looking for the season that they're ready and I'm sad when the season's over with and we don't have any more tomatoes. And this is the black olives that I'm going to add at the end and these are sliced and this is the very small can of the sliced olives and we're just going to add this around. And this just adds another little color to it. If you don't like sliced um, olives, you don't have to add them. And if you don't like the black olives, you can always add the green ones if you really want to add some olives, but you don't like the black olives. So as you can see, this salad is so easy to make. It is going to be so tasty when we taste it. So when we come back, we'll have Frank come back and we're going to taste our taco salad. So we'll see you back in just a little bit. Welcome back to Garden Delights. We have taco salad, Frank. All right. And it's very tasty, but I do need everybody to know the tomato that is on top of the salad. That tomato looks very familiar to me. I think it was out back on my tomato plant, my favorite one. It was. When you weren't looking today, mm -hmm. I went and got, grabbed it real quick okay. because I need it for my taco salad. All right. So let's try it. And I am going to dig in it because I want you to get all the way to the bottom. We got to have all the ingredients all the way to the bottom. So I'm going to pick up and I'm going to probably make a little mess, but that's okay too. But I got to make sure you get some meat. So hold on. I want to make sure you get meat. Yeah, and we want to make chips. sure. We so, want it, all of it. As you can see, when you're that serving looks, this salad. That looks pretty good. It is going to be really good. Got some stuff out of the garden in it. Yes, that's what I was talking about. If you're really thinking about what you have in your garden, you can make it. Just yes. a minute. You can make a wonderful salad just by putting it together. And we've been out to the farm today. Yes. We've been out with the peacocks and the chickens and the roosters and the donkey and the goats and the, I mean, it, and the cattle and the, just rabbits. You name it. I mean, we were right in the middle of the of the farm today. So. You were and what a great way to kind of finish it out with a taco salad. With, That's right. You could go right on your, that farm that you were out, right? That's right. Well, the lettuce. Everything we could have gotten except the chips. I don't think they had any chips growing. I don't think they probably did. Mm. That is really tasty. I really like the Catalina dressing. It's a little twist to it, give mm. a little sweet to it. Very, very good. Easy to make. Um, I probably could eat the whole bowl, but I'd make myself I might. sick. You might. I, might. I figure you might. I won't do it on TV though. I'll wait. This is a really, really good salad to make, easy to make. Um, check out the website for the recipe. I know you want to make this very, very soon with all the garden things coming in from your garden. This is a great way to end that summer heat for the summer, cool off with a great taco salad. You know, I was uh, reading the newspaper today and they're putting these recipes in the, in the Times. And uh, I just wanted people to know that I may be available, you know, to taste. Just call me. That sounds like a winner. Anytime they make some of this. Frank and I will see you back on Garden Delights.